God bless you for choosing to listen to this anointed message from Dr. Reverend Christopher Abulame of King's Tabernacle, where Jesus Christ is Lord and we are bringing the kingdom to the nations. Today, I, I have chosen this topic. I hope you have been blessed by this. The friendly friends. Friendly friends. And I want to dwell on that a little bit and just dwell on relationship a little bit. And, and part of it I started to talk about last, last, uh, last week. And, and today I want to continue to, to dwell on this. Amen. And I want to be reading from the book of Mark chapter 2. And there are 12 verses, and I'm not going to read all 12 verses today. 12 verses that relate to this story, uh, Jesus and the people who came to him. And, and especially a man who got healed in the service when Jesus was there. And that's what I want to be talking about today. Uh, praise the Lord. Isn't God good? <laughs> Isn't God good? Yes, it's good all the time. Amen. And his mercy endures forever. So we thank the Lord for this wonderful Sunday morning as we celebrate the Lord Jesus Christ. And, and, and so, first thing I want to say this morning is that friendship does not begin with friendship. Friendship does not begin with friendship. And you may ask, what does that mean? I'm, I'm going somewhere. Not everybody that say hi to you is your friend. Not everyone that treated you right is your friend. Friendship starts with relationship. You will need to build relationship first and then friendship develops out of relationship. And sometimes we put it the other way around. But to have an enduring friendship you have to have a solid relationship. Without a solid relationship, you cannot have a solid friendship. And so we find that Christians are disappointed and folks are disappointed because they just found out down the road that the person that they thought was their best friend is really not. The foundations has not been right. And it is the foundation of relationship that I build my friendship. Without a solid relationship, I cannot build a solid friendship. And now, the word relationship, I like to just look at it a little bit. And, but before I look at that, let's look at the scriptures that, that we're uh, talking about today. Mark chapter 2. And this story is not only recorded in the book of Mark, it's also recorded in the book of Matthew chapter 9 from verse 1 to 8, and also the book of Luke, chapter, 9, chapter 5, from verse 17. But I've chosen to, to read from the book of Mark today. Mark chapter 2. It said, And again he entered into Capernaum after some days. And it was noise that he was in the house. Jesus came to Capernaum, and the Bible says that it was noise that he was in the house. And the scripture continues in verse 2, And straight away many were gathered together, inasmuch as there was no room to receive them. No, not so much as about the door. You couldn't even get close to the door. A lot of people came because Jesus was in the room. I, I wish the same mentality is today. That whenever is Sunday, we have church. Glory to God. And, and folk ought to leave their homes and come to church and be part of the fellowship of God's people. And so Jesus was in the room and the place was saturated. Folk came from all over to see him. Folk came from all over to see him. I was seeking to see Christ today. Or I would come in a church to find a friend. Glory to God. Hallelujah. And so they came to see Christ and there was no room in the house and there was no way you could get to the door. And he preached the word of God to them. And in another rendition of this story, it said the power of the Lord was present to heal them while he was there. And they, came, they, and they come unto him, bringing one sick of palsy. 
which bore by four. So in this story, Christ is here having a crusade or, or having a, a, a teaching session. The part of God was there, the scribes were there, the Pharisees were there, and Jesus Christ preaching in another person's house, and four men brought their friend. Four men brought their friend. And they brought their friend for a reason. And I admire the courage of this four men. Admire their determination. Admire the fact that they did not let their friend down. Admire the fact that they did not criticize their friend. Admire the fact that they were willing to go far and beyond to seek help for their friend. And like I was saying, relationship is the bedrock of friendship. Without it, you cannot have a solid friendship. And now, fr friendship is at a different level. And somebody described it like this, said if you look at the, the temple, how it was in the, in, the, in the days of Solomon, you have the outer court, you have the inner court, and you have the holy of holies. And you have folks who are in your outer court. And these are folks that you acquaint yourself with. They're your friend, but they're not your deep friend. You wouldn't share your deep secret with them because you have not built a relationship with them. And some of them are your professional friend. And the mistake we make is that we draw those individuals into our very holy of holies. And those who are in the inner court, and those are folks who are close to you, but not close to you enough that you can share your secret with them. But you have a few handful of individuals, if you are blessed, if you're truly blessed, you have a handful, one or two individuals that you can open up your heart to and know that whatever you share with them is going to be kept between you and him. And those are the individual or individual that will pick you up when you're down, stay with you until the end. They are friends forever. And those are the folk that are friendly friends. And so what I'm saying is that let's look at this word relationship for a, a, a moment. Because that word is thrown around quite a bit. And over time, it's been misinterpreted. But when you go back and do an etymological study of, of relationship itself, you see that that word is very powerful. And let's break this word down. Now, if you look at the word R-E, R-E in relationship means back. When you see re in any word, it means back. Anytime you see that preface, it means back. So re means take back. And lation in this word is from the Latin word lation. And that means to bear or carry. It's from the Latin word latus, which means to bear or to carry. Now, when you put those words together, real and lation, it means to carry back or to bring back. Which means that there was a reason why somebody would need to be brought back to his place. So you're looking at when you're building relationship, you're building relationship with folks who can help you retrace your step. Not only, not only folk who tell you all the good things that you want to hear. People who tell you stuff that you want to hear are not your true friends. Jesus said, woe unto you if man says good things about you. If all they say about you is good and you have nobody who will look you in the eye and tell you you're wrong about this, then you have truly no friends yet. And so, relationship means bring back. And it is created. It evolves over time. The, the last part of it that says ship, when you find ship in any word, whether it be relationship or partnership, Ship by self is from a German word that means to create or to make. So you, you and I need to put in effort to build relationship. And upon that, we build our friendship. Our friendship is a state of mutual trust and support. Underline that word mutual. Mutual trust and support. It's got to be two ways. It cannot just be you giving only. The other partner needs to give back to you. So if God is my friend, God is not just in the business of giving only. I need to give to God too. I need to give him my heart. I need to give him my life. I need to give him my talent, my treasure, and my time. So it 
it's a two-way relationship. So when you are in a relationship where you're just giving and giving and giving, never get back from that person that you are not yet having a good friend. You have not found a good friend. And now, let's look at this story. In this story, we see this man that was paralyzed. We see Jesus. We see his four friends. Let's take a look at him as a human being. In this man's life, it is clear to me from scripture that his paralysis did not start from when he was young. The Bible says that Jesus told him at the end of the encounter and said, take your bed and go back to your house. That's what the law said. So it means to me that the man got a house. You couldn't afford a house back in the day or even now if you're not a little wealthy, if you don't have money. So he might have been doing well before he got struck with the disease. That's why the law said, take your bed, go back to your house. So he was not a homeless beggar. He was not one of those who was sitting by the poolside waiting for the water to trouble so he can be healed. He was not of those beggars who were sitting by the wayside. This man had a house, so he must have been doing well before he got struck by his disease. And that's number one. He had a condition that seemed to have generated because of his sin. Why do we say that? Jesus, when he came before Christ, the first thing Jesus said is, Thy sin have forgiven thee. That's the first words that Christ said to him. The moment they lowered him before the Lord, God looked at him, didn't talk about his paralysis. The first thing he said, Thy sin is forgiven you. And Twice in scripture, recorded scripture, you see Jesus say this to somebody, your sin is forgiven you or go and sin no more after healing or casting out of devils. First, we see this in the book of John chapter 5 and Jesus found the man that he had healed and told him, he says, see, you are well again. Stop sinning or something worse may happen to you. That's what the Lord said to this young man who had been healed. He said to him, you are now well. After he saw him in the temple many days after he had been healed. You are now well. And he said to him, stop sinning. If you don't stop sinning, something worse will happen to you. So that shows to me that there could be a connection between the sin of that man in his disease. And now the second instance is recorded in John chapter 8 from verse 3. And, and you remember this woman who was caught in adultery came, was brought to Jesus about a stone her to death. And Jesus said to her, after go and sin no more. Go and sin no more. So sin can allow certain things to find their way into our lives. And so when this man was brought before the Lord Jesus, Jesus said to him, Thy sin is forgiven thee. So it could be that the sin that he was committing when he had everything, when he was rich and wealthy, created the problem that he had. So that is the man. But the man had some four friends. Some very good four friends. And I believe that these four friends knew him when everything was all right with him. When he was not sick, when he was, his business was doing very well, when life was good with him, they knew him. And when things went south for him and he was struck with this paralysis, they stayed with him. Glory to God. When he was not doing well, they knew him. When he was struck with paralysis, they stayed with him. 
So the man must have lived a reckless life, but his friend, knowing his reckless life, did not abandon him. A true friend will be with you on your mountaintop. And they'll be with you down in the valley. They're not just with you when they can fly your private jet. When you have no private jet, they still be there with you if all you have is a bicycle. There's a true friend. They're not only there when you can afford to take them out. They're still with you when you cannot afford to take them out. And so they were with him all the way. And when he got struck with his disease, and I believe that he tried to find solution to it, and I'm sure he went all over. And when you compare this to what happened with Job, after Job lost everything, what happened? His wife, his wife said to him, Job cursed God and died. All of his friends told him, you need to abandon this God. These four friends, rather than telling him to abandon God, they looked for Christ for him. Your best friend will always lead you to Jesus. If you're a true believer, you're a true Christian, your good friend will always show you the way of salvation. He always show you how to be stronger. He's not going to take you to the prostitute. He's not going to take you to a place where you've been drinking and, and, and committing sin against God. He's not going to allow you to do those things. He'll keep you away from anything that will contaminate your relationship with God. A true friend will lead you in a spiritual way. And so you see that these four individuals came to the man and said, we heard that Jesus is in town. I'm not sure that the paralyzed man knew that Christ was even in town. It is very likely that it was the four men that heard about it. Because this friend was incapacitated. He was locked in and probably didn't know what was going on around him. And he might have been depressed and feeling so bad and, and thinking about where he was and where he is now. But even in all of this, his poor friend did not abandon him. Some of us are here today and all those who are look, watching us over the internet, you have friends who have abandoned you. They were with you when things were all right. And the moment things started to feel a little tough, they walked away from you. And I want to encourage you today that even Jesus experienced that. The folks who came just to eat his food when he multiplied the loaves and the fish. And after that, they left him. In his very moment of need, when he was being questioned and, 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 and interrogated, and even when he was, he was being chastised by the Roman soldiers and and even in his crucifixion, all of those people who ate his bread and their fish were not there. But a handful of, the, of his disciples stayed with him to the end. Imagine how that would have felt. That in his very deepest moment, Christ the Lord, everyone abandoned him except very few disciples and his parents who stayed with him. So don't feel bad when everybody abandoned you, those who you have put so much confidence in, and you've trusted them so much, and they left you. You know why? Because you never built a relationship with them in the first place. You thought you had friends, you didn't. You had acquaintances. And that's why, in your very moment of need, they left you. But a good friend will stay with you. He'll help you up. He'll hold you up as long as they can. He hold your hand as long as they can. He help you throughout the way until you find solution to that problem. I don't know how many times this four friend went all over trying to get solution for their friend until they found the right place. And when they heard that Jesus, the healer, the power of God was present there to heal people to remember their friend. Now think about it, folks who don't remember you when things are good. There's a job 
affair somewhere they don't remember that you exist they tell you about it after the fact and they know you're looking for a job there's something out there that's good they won't tell you about it until it's all over they'll testify in church you know why because you never had a relationship you thought you did you did it and you're disappointed I'm disappointed but again don't feel bad because Christ had to go through the same exact thing and everybody left him but there's always hope everything that's written in the scripture is written for our learning good or bad written for our learning so we can avoid the same mistakes that all this have made and that's what I emphasize this you need to make sure that you're building relationship first before friendship and, and, and they heard Jesus was in town they went to their friend and said friend we, 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 I know we've done all that we can you've done all that you can let's give this one more try they encouraged him they took him from their home four of them bore him and they brought him to the crusade ground or the place where Jesus was teaching and when they got there ladies and gentlemen the place was packed couldn't even get through the door now there was something about this four individual they could have given up they could have stopped they didn't because of the love for their friend a good friend will not stop until they find solution to your problem and help you out of the condition that you're in and they, sometimes it's just one person it's not two For who say well I have a hundred friends because you have a hundred people friend you on Facebook those are not your friend glory to God if, if that's where you place your hope on you're standing on sinking ground some of them you don't even know where they are <laughs> glory be to God in your very modern moment of need they're not gonna be there they'll, they, they'll, they'll leave you they'll hop on to somebody else when you no longer can give them a ride they hop up to somebody else when you no longer can give them money they hop up to somebody else when you no longer can accommodate them they hop onto somebody else and those are hoppers and they're not your true friends you'll be very disappointed if you put your hope in them and that's why the bible said no greater love than these than for a friend to give his life for his own friend it's that friend that stick it closer than a brother you build that bond with that individual or a couple of individuals throughout life and those are people who stand with you support you stay with you and this is what we see here in this man's life thank God he had those four and I'm sure when he was doing well he had more than four people each time he had parties in his home many people came to him there were folks who were depending on him there are people who will come to him and and pretend to be his friend because things were going good and that's what happened to Job all of Job's friends left him criticized him said all kind of things about him they even said that he had sinned against God that's why God was punishing him have you heard people say that about you I have heard people say that about me you've sinned against God that's why you're being punished a good friend will never say that about you will never criticize you to the degree that you will feel so bad about yourself he'll pull you up in love he'll bear your burden with you he'll be there he'll empathize with you he'll help you to find solution to your issues they came to him and said friend we heard about a man called Jesus you might have heard about him we have not met him but we heard about him he might just solve your problem and he might have hesitated to go with them but they might have encouraged him and said let's go let's give this one more shot we've gone many places but this is going to be different I promise you hallelujah and he came with them and they brought him to the to the house where Jesus was who is carrying you where are they carrying you to are they carrying you to a place of solution 
or are they carrying you to a place of problem? And believe it or not, there are people out there who will deliberately lead you to a place of problem. Deliberately lead you to a place of chaos. And we've got to be careful and be led by the Holy Spirit of God. Let him order your step. Not every decision, not every, every single suggestion should we take. But this man followed his friend because he trusted them. Remember what we said, it's a basis of mutual trust and support. He trusted them, they supported him and brought him to the place. But there was no way to get him. They did not give up, number one. They were determined, number two, that their friend was not going home until their friend received solution. They were determined. And when they could not go in, what they did is phenomenal. The Bible says when they got to the door, there were so many people on the door and they could not come in with their friend. They went through the roof. They climbed up the roof with their friend, with them, four of them, buried him and his bed and took him up the roof and opened up the roof. And how they knew that the exact spot that they were opening is where Christ will be, was beyond them. Open up the roof and lower the man into the presence of Jesus. The Bible makes it dramatic that they brought him right in the front of Jesus. And the man landed right in the front of Jesus. Jesus was amazed. And Jesus looked at them and said, their faith. He mentioned their faith, not the faith of the man. Because it was not the man. It was his friend. You and I need people who will exercise their faith for us. And those are your true people. Those are your true friends who will stand and exercise their faith for you. It was the faith of the friends that made this man whole. So they opened the roof and brought the man down. How many of the people that eat your food, that drink your water, that hang around till midnight in your house, will bring you this far with them? That they are willing to take the trip up the roof and will it with their bare hands to move the towels or whatever, however they made the roof back in the day, and find a spot enough to contain you and be able to lower you to Jesus so you can find your healing. How many would do that? A true friend will go far and beyond, will tell you where your salvation is, where your healing is, where you can find solution to every problem that plagues you. They're not going to criticize you. They're gonna, not going to make fun of your failures. They're going to encourage you to keep moving. They're going to encourage you to keep going. And Christ saw what these men had done. He looked at the man who was lowered and said, Thy sin are forgiven. What a moment. His sin would never have been forgiven had this poor man not made that effort to bring him before Christ. He probably would have died in his house because he was paralyzed, couldn't do anything for himself. But thank God for the friends who would help him to get to the next level. Who would help him to get to the next place in life. And that's what we need. Those are the people we need. Who will bring us to the next place. And the next and the next and the next. And keep encouraging you that it's going to be alright. That God is in control of your situation. That I'm praying for you. And truly praying. Because a lot of times, not everybody who said to you that I'm praying to you, for you is truly praying for you. You think they are, but they're really not. But you're talking about people who will truly, truly take your matter before God in prayer and in fasting and say, God, heal my brother, save my friend, help him, give him what he needs, encourage him, strengthen him. Those are the true people that you should surround yourself with. And, 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 
And after he said, Thy sin has been forgiven thee, as you would always know, the Pharisees were there, the scribes were there, everybody was upset. How can a man, they said, This is blasphemy. How can a man forgive the sin of another man? And Jesus looked at them because he knew their heart and their thoughts, what they were thinking about. Now, think about it. A man paralyzed found his way into the room through the roof. That didn't bother any of them. What bothered them was that Jesus said to this man, your sin is forgiven. So they were more religious than anything else. And Christ said, well, if that bothers you, I know what you're going to do. I'm waiting to see what you're going to do about this. And he said to the man, take your bed and go home. He said, which is easier? To tell a man that your sin is forgiven or to tell him to take your bed and go to your home. And immediately Jesus said that. The man who had been paralyzed for such a long time got up and took his bed and began his walk home. He came through the roof, but he went out through the door. Glory to God. He was carried to the place. He walked by himself home. The bed that brought him to the place, he brought the bed home. So his, his life completely transformed and changed by just coming before Christ. He would never have been there were not for the four friends. And again, a good friend does not take the glory. Folks will tell you, yeah, without me, you would never have been where you are today. You know why they're not your good friends. These four folks are not even known. We don't know their names. Jesus never acknowledged them and said, Oh, great job. Thank you for doing that. My God, I've never seen anything like that. No. N nobody in the congregation talked about them. Not even the man that went home, I don't see quite a lot. Maybe he did. He didn't th he thank them. I, the whole thing was dumb. But those are not recorded. Those are details that we don't know. But the glory went to God. And the man went home, and those four individuals never sought to be recognized. So when somebody tells you, well, without me, you would never have got a job. If it was not me, you would never have a place to live in. If I wasn't there, you would never be nothing. If I didn't do this for you, you would never have this. You know why? Because they're not your true, true friends. What am I saying this morning? We all need friends, and there are friendly friends, and there are unfriendly friends. They pretend to be your friend, but they're really not. And you, you cannot put your hope and trust in them. And then number two, you build relationship before you build friends. Your, your relationship with individuals that you meet along the way at the bedrock, or is the bedrock, for friendship. You don't start being friend before building a relationship. You're putting the cart before the horse. That's not going to last. What lasts is when you have the time to truly know that individual, know who they are, know what they think, understand that you're compatible with them, and then begins to open up your heart. You just don't go to the train station and tell everybody your life. Doesn't matter how deep you are in the hole you just don't tell everybody your life there are folks that you can trust with the details of your life because you know those individuals are going to help you to get to the next level they can help you to come out of it and understand that your best friend would always lead you to a place of safety a place of help he'll tell you about christ He'll tell you about Jesus. He'll tell you about salvation. He'll tell you there is life after this that is more important than what we have now. That if you live a hundred years, it's nothing compared to eternity. That's a fraction of eternity. That you must make your reservation in heaven. So that if you, for whatever reason, depart this earthly realm, you have security with God. And you will be with God forever. That's a good friend. This is what they did. They led him to Christ. Not to the doctor, because the doctor couldn't help it. They brought him to Jesus. And they did everything. 
They were dedicated to this man, not to themselves, dedicated to this man. They encouraged themselves. None of them complained about the journey. They don't know how far they traveled to come to where Jesus was, carrying him, every man carrying one side. Don't know how long they traveled, but they endured and they brought him to the Lord. And he got his healing on that day. And his life completely changed. And he was back to himself because of his four friends that were with him. And I pray that the Lord will bring into your life individuals that will be your support. Folks who will truly help you. And for those who have been disappointed, one way or the other, all hope is not lost. A man falls to the ground, he learns to get up again, dust himself up, and keep moving. I said this many months ago, maybe years ago, that failing is not failure. You can fail, but that doesn't make you a failure. What makes me and you a failure is when we stop trying, when we stay there. But sometimes we need that person that will help us and say, hey, you can do it. You can do better than this. You, you, can, you can keep going. Don't worry. I'll be with you. I'll help you. Whatever you need, call me. You call him in the midnight, he'll be there to take your call. Failing is not failure. So don't give up. Don't give up on your God. Don't give up on yourself. Don't give up on your friends who are truly your friends. Let God lead you through this life. And that will save you and me all the disappointments that come through life. So I pray, I pray for you, I pray today that the Lord God will be your God. He will help you through this life so that at the end of the day, you'll be a better person, you'll be a happier person. You don't have to go through this roller coaster of emotions and, and all the things that some of us go through so that the name of God in your life and my life will be exalted. So I thank you for being here today. Let us pray in the name of Jesus. Father, thank you. We give you glory. We give you honor and praise, Lord. We have shared together from this story, and I pray, God, that you will encourage us even the more. God Almighty, you will set in our lives four different pillars that will hold us up. Lord, especially in our time of distress, and our time of failure. Lord, you did it for this man, and we believe you would do it for us. Thank you for all those who made it out today. Thank you for those who are watching all over the world. Lord, we just ask that your power, your presence will go with us in the name of Jesus. We give you the glory and the praise. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen, amen, and amen. If you have been blessed by this message or have a prayer request, we would like to hear about it. Please call us at 401-954-6188 or visit our website at www.kingstabernacle.org. You are also welcome to join us on Sundays for services beginning at 8.30, 10 a.m. or 6 p.m. and for Wednesday Bible studies at 7 p.m. We are located at 500 Greenville Avenue in Johnston, Rhode Island. Please remember that you are always welcome at King's Tabernacle, where Jesus Christ is Lord, and we are bringing the kingdom to the nation.